I'm a native of New Holland near Botany Bay. My native name is Bugjaragori, alias William. I was young when I left my tribe. I'm now about 25 years old. I had been employed on a whaling ship. After some time, I joined a sealing vessel out of Sydney and remained sealing about five years. You have to remember that the Indigenous worldview before Europeans arrived was as far as the eye could see. The Eora lived between the salt water and the sky. They lived entirely for generations on fish and their most precious possession was what they called a nawi, a stringy bark canoe. The indigenous people of Sydney used the rivers and the tributaries as their highways and their supermarkets. Murray Nawi Aboriginal Odysseys is the exhibition at the State Library of New South Wales. It tells the story of 35 Aboriginal people who took part in Australia's early maritime history. They actually went to sea from Port Jackson in English sailing ships. And this has been unknown really until now because the sources are spread so wide. Letters, uh, official documents, journals from the Mitchell Library's vast repository. Of course, history is written by the victors. What we're doing is re-examining those documents to put Indigenous people into the shared history of Australia. They didn't fade away, they didn't die out, they became part of colonial Sydney. The, the centrepiece of the exhibition is a full-scale replica, Nawi, built for the first time since about the 1830s when canoes disappeared from Sydney Harbour. I'd been anticipating the canoe arriving for a long time, so I was standing at the front of the library and here's this canoe barrelling around the corner. It was quite exciting. It was put in an oxygen-deprived environment, so none of the bugs from the bush could come into the collection, and it's, it now has pride of place in the exhibition. When the tall ships arrived, the Sydney clans were all very scared, and they imagined that the people on the ships were either ghosts or possums. The 11 ships of the First Fleet came in in January 1788. Aboriginal people were shocked, they were scared. They thought these ships were giant birds or even floating islands. They thought the people climbing up the masts were possums because the English sailors had their hair braided behind them as they scampered up and down the mast. But these same ships that they'd feared were to be the salvation of all of those people who went to sea. that gave them a way of fitting into colonial life. These people were physically adapted to a life at sea. They had good eyesight, they could throw a spear, they could catch fish, they could find water. But the, beyond that, they had something in them. They had a resilience, they had a determination to survive. I'm actually in awe of the men, women and children of the Sydney clan who decided to travel because for them to hop on these big canoes, these Murray Nawis, and sail off the edge of the earth, it was a very brave thing for them to do. In my research, I suddenly discovered a song and the music for it that was sung in 1793 by Aboriginal men been along in Yamawarani in Mayfair in London. The words are very hard to decipher. Songs were ancient, songs travelled in Aboriginal society, but the first two words we can probably make out. Barabula barama manginwayanguna Barabula barama in, in Sydney language is two, and bara can mean kangaroos. <coughs> Benelong sailed home in HMS Reliance. He'd spent three years on ships as he approached Sydney in the Reliance. He was delirious with joy at again being in his home country and seeing his kin people. He said, I'd never leave my country again. Our traditional history, our received history, has been one of convicts, explorers, this is a hidden history. Sydney Aboriginal people can push our history right back to the depths of time. We've been in the Sydney area for at least 40,000 years. The documents that we've found from all different places have been brought together to show that Indigenous people were part of the growing colony of Sydney. In this exhibition, we get the answer partly to what happened to Aboriginal people after those big Murray Nawi, the sailing ships, came into Sydney Harbour in 1788, how they rebuilt their lives, went to sea through the Sydney Heads and sailed beyond the horizon 
thus setting a pattern that lasted for generations. Murray Nawi, Aboriginal Odysseys, a free exhibition at the State Library of New South Wales until December 12th.